डिजिटल इंक्लूसिविटी डायलॉग एपिसोड वन सी ए दर्पण इनानी गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट इंटरनेशनल चेस प्लेयर एंड सी ए कनन बैल पर्सनल फाइनेंस एजुकेटर एक्स के पी एम जी हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द डिजिटल इंक्लूसिविटी डायलॉग लॉन्च बाय सरल एक्स दिस सीरीज इज लॉन्च टू क्रिएट अवेयरनेस अराउंड डिजिटल एक्सेसिबिलिटी and this we will be featuring different persons with disability who have championed in their domain and beaded different challenges related to digital accessibility and in general different challenges they face uh, when they try to navigate their life and the path in the journey uh, so today we have uh, this is the first uh, webinar we have in the series and today we have two guests joining us uh, one is dapan inani and another one is kanan bah so uh, darpan and kanan both are ca uh, by profession uh, darpan is person with disability himself he will be talking more about himself um, in the upcoming part uh, and uh, he darpan is also a chess champion uh, which you will learn about him like how he used to play the chess uh, and like what are the different challenges he faced uh, during uh, the journey Uh, so this is a brief, and if I talk about Kanan, so Kanan is a uh, personal finance social uh, influencer, social media influencer. He uh, talks about uh, personal finance on various platforms. He guides, uh, provide different kind of opinions, different kind of advice, so that people can manage the personal finance. As I mentioned, he has uh, also done CA, and in past he has worked with KPMG. so that is what briefly i will talk about uh, both of them now i will request darpan to briefly introduce himself yeah so well uh, i'm based out of baroda gujarat and uh, i'm 100% visually impaired well i was not a born blind but at the age of 3 i was uh, affected with stevens johnson syndrome due to a wrong injection by doctor and uh, after that like uh, due to that incident i lost my eyesight completely so i don't have even light perception uh, now and uh, like okay we tried everything uh, medically that we could but nothing worked so then at the age of 8 like i mean i had uh, i hadn't had any formal schooling before that but uh, i thought like okay it okay we, we thought okay now we should pursue academics and uh, in that process uh, like i was admitted to a normal school because uh, like my parents wanted to integrate me with the mainstream right from the very beginning so back then uh, that was like 2003 2004 uh, so the concept of inclusivity was not uh, very well known then and it, it was not very widely accepted actually in india right. so we had a lot of struggles you know uh, getting me to a normal school and but okay finally uh, uh, we succeeded succeeded to do that like one school in baroda agreed to do that i studied in uh, baroda high school alkapuri and i was the only visually impaired student there and also i was the first one i mean they the school authorities did not have any previous experience of uh, uh, teaching uh, a differently abled student i guess so but uh, this is how the journey kick started and uh, as far as uh, the studies in, in school were concerned uh, like i used to appear for my exams on computer also used to do my homework as, as well as class work on computer mm. uh i never felt the necessity to learn braille and uh, like uh, there is this screen reading software called jaws i uh, read everything with the help of that back then uh, scanning was not very well developed actually so my mother used to type out everything like all the textbooks right from third standard until seventh standard because if we try to scan those things you know uh, all the tables would be haywire and uh, you know the text which is in line 1 might go to line 3 or uh, vice versa so it was a problem back then and screen readers were not very compatible with the scanned text so she used to type Uh, every single page of every textbook you know uh, barring hindi gujarati of course because i studied in a state board like it was gujarat board so gujarati was also mandatory subject and hindi too uh, but uh, my software could read only the text in english so all the other books barring these two subjects hindi gujarati uh, we like my parents fed it fed those books into computer i used to read them 
uh, using the software. And uh, as far as the exams are concerned, the school authorities used to scan the question paper <clears throat> into the computer. Software would read that. And then I would create spaces below each question by pressing the enter key and would type out the answer. So in my case, it was a print printed uh, answer sheet instead of uh, um, no, uh, the handwritten answer sheet as in the case of other students. That was the only difference. So mm -hmm. this is how we all, like we navigated uh, the schooling right from 3rd to 12th. And uh, thereafter, I like started with B. I mean, I had opted for commerce in 11. So after 12, like, okay, BCom and CA, I started uh, with both uh, simultaneously. Uh, uh, like, as far as CA is concerned, I cleared my uh, CPT, like uh, entrance, um, CA entrance, and also the intermediates in very first attempt. Uh, and uh, for CA final, of course, it took me almost five attempts to uh, complete that. Uh, for, for the CA final, but uh, I cleared th that as well, and uh, I'm a qualified chartered accountant uh, as of now. And yeah, and as far as chess journey is concerned, okay, I started playing chess at the age of 13 years, and that was because there was no other game which uh, you know enabled a visually impaired person to compete with the sighted on equal footing. So this was the only game which offered this unique opportunity. With all the other sports you see, you know, para athletes or uh, para badminton or anything of that sort. So I guess the rules are modified and it's very difficult to compete with the sighted counterpart. But in chess, there are no dispensations, no modifications for a visually impaired person. Okay, everything is at par with the sighted. And uh, I always say this, like, uh, you know, in all my uh, public uh, conversations that it's it's about vision and not visibility. Uh, uh, so chess, uh, I, I guess chess mirrors that completely. So that is what intrigued me about chess. And uh, like, okay, my father taught me the basics. I played in one sighted tournament in in my district. I was the only blind participant there. And uh, there I like found my mentor who then guided us to uh, us as to where you know where. Can I take my uh, my uh, official chess cl classes from or coaching from, and how can I excel? So this is how you know things went on, and uh, eventually, like I started playing at the district level, won the district, state, and national and so on and so forth. So yeah, so this is how it is. Like this is how the chess, chess journey kick started, and then finally, uh, the most recent achievement was by winning two gold medals for the country at the para Asian Games, which concluded just a month back. So yeah, this is how the journey has been so far. Great. Uh, it's really inspiring, uh, Japan. Um, and congratulations for the gold medals. Uh, thank you. Which you have won. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And thank you for highlighting the different challenges which you have faced and how you have overcome, like uh, especially the document accessibility, like how yeah. to make the documents accessible, the study material accessible for yourself. So that yeah. uh, and your mother's effort towards that, uh, actually typing out each and everything, uh, there was like, <laughs> in a way, like you have to, your mother has to create all the books uh, again uh, and type out everything. There was no exactly. solution available at that point of time. Yeah, because yeah. the soft copies weren't available. Like now you have these NCRT stuff and soft copy readily available. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like then, like in 2003, 4, 5, uh, that wasn't the case. So right. yeah. So, so the same story continues even during your CA time or like uh, did you find any solution uh, during that time or your mother is still used to uh, type out? No, 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 no. Uh, it was only until 7th or 8th standard and after that, of course, I, as I like um, I told you that, uh, okay, um, I mean, uh, then the digital copies or the soft copies were available and uh, in CA, of course, you have all the books on their website, mm -hmm. uh, ICI.org. So you have all the books there in PDF format. Uh, okay. So yeah, you can simply download those from there, and uh, yeah, I mean, then the PDF can be read by the screen reader. Okay, interesting. And those PDF was properly accessible with a screen reader. So there was no issue in that, or was? Yeah, um, most of them were pegged, but of course there is issue as far as the practical subjects are concerned. Okay, when we talk about accounts, and uh, when we talk about uh, like financial management subjects. 
So in the practical subjects, when the you know there are uh, lots of tables, you know, like you have balance sheet, P and L, cash flow statement, fund flow statement. So when those tables appear and the figures appear, then there is of course this problem with the screen reader. So for practical subjects, like my father used to read out those to me, and uh, like I because I never had any external tuition. I bought video lectures for a subject or two. But other than that, I never went for the tuitions. I mean, not during my schooling, uh, neither during my schooling, nor during the uh, So, yeah, because uh, it's very difficult to navigate the you know, figures and calculations with uh, or the journal entries with the help of uh, this uh, screen reading software. Nice. Uh, so now I will switch over uh, the gears and ask uh, Kanan uh, for his reactions on this journey, because he has also gone through the same journey. Uh, mm -hmm. what is the initial thoughts coming to your mind and like what what is your reactions on this so first of all uh, congratulations Zipin, uh, for mm -hmm. getting our country two gold medals that's really a big thing and uh, congratulations and thank you uh, that you got it for our country otherwise some other country would have won so hats off to you your hard work and your grit and uh, I really liked and it really touched me when you said that it's not about uh, the visuals, it's about the vision. So uh, really like that uh, phrase from you. Uh, as far as I can recall my CA uh, inter and even CA CPT journey, it's it's <laughs> clearly not, uh, I won't say, if, if I talk about foundation of CPT, I won't say that it's very, very tough, but definitely it's not easy, right? And yeah. CA inter is, again, definitely not easy and it is tough. It is very tough. So... I remember I used to study for 16 to 18 hours a day for months. And that's how I could clear it in the first attempt. And that you said, uh, and after that, when you said that, you know, you had to involve your father in, uh, you know, when whenever it came to tables, etc., anything. Yeah. I'm sure it must be, it must have been such a big challenge for you, uh, managing time, etc., everything. Uh, so how how did you do that? What or, or is it the only thing that you that you did, and you were able to grasp things faster? Uh yes. In my case, okay. I mean, uh, like fortunately enough, I had this basic very clear. I was able to. Then again, it was all a Herculean task. I mean, I mean, I, uh, it it was not as e as easy as I'm uh, describing it to be. Because uh, yeah. when you have to, <laughs> yeah, go through that uh, uh, churning. I mean, CA course in itself is too vast. Yeah, it's like amongst the one of the lengthiest courses, not in just not just in the country, but in the world, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so syllabus is too vast, and uh, with your eyes closed, uh, with nothing visible to you, when you have to do that, of course, it becomes very tough. You have to put in uh, maybe you know, uh, if not more than at least one point two five times the effort uh, a normal person would have to put in. Right. So, and uh, like uh, my father also had to, like after coming from his uh, the office, he had to read all the, the all those things. He had to first understand by himself and then he had to explain those to me. Okay. And uh, then I had to dictate these to the writer because uh, in CA, computers are not allowed. Like you're not allowed computers to, in, in exams. Okay. So you have to opt for a writer. And you have to dictate each and everything to the writer ki balance sheet mein aap, uh, you know three columns banao, uh, like uh, particulars rupees rupees huh? so you have to like a inner column rupees kind like outer column to aap inner mein sara cheez, you would uh, total them up and jo grand total hai, outer column mein so ye sara cheez dictate karne ke baad, uh, like you know i mean it was uh, uh, it was very like painstaking but okay, I got used to it. No, uh, you said 1.25 times. I think that's a big miss. Uh, that's that's a big, you know, understatement, I would say, because even yeah. the, even with eyes open and everything in place, like I had a separate room. Many of my friends, uh, uh, like especially the ones who live in Mumbai, even have a, spe uh, a separate room, even if they're from the upper middle class, right? And then yeah. after that, uh, you know, uh, time taken to travel to classes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's such a big hassle, right? And after that, yeah. with your father putting in the efforts after coming to office and you being very active at 
that are of the that are of the uh, day because you would have already studied during the entire day and then you had to be mentally active after all that and hats off to your father as well that he was so hard working on you and uh, really really it's really interesting so uh, how did you manage your article ship and uh, ca final studies because uh, i don't i don't think it's uh, just 1.25 times extra i think it's at least five times extra effort that any normal yeah. person would require and even for a normal person clearing ca is a big task uh, a herculean task with everything in place right uh even i could do it in the first attempt but that was again because like i told you everything was fine but god's blessings were there i was lucky i even scored 42 times in uh inter and final so uh with everything in place uh i could clear it in the first attempt and uh with a lot of hard work but i mm-hmm. can't imagine if i didn't have uh if i didn't have eyes so uh while hats off to you but anything that you can uh, share with our institute of chartered accountants of india or the education system the, wherever you see gaps and uh, they can be improved for people who don't have vision or have any special abilities uh, do you have any suggestions for them across the country yeah i would first i mean uh, always uh, take request all the educational institutes to align their policies uh, because uh, there is no like cohesiveness amongst uh, various educational institutions with regard to the policy for uh, the friendly able uh, as far as exams are concerned. Like, you know, this UPSC uh, thing, they have this system in place wherein, okay, they ha- do not have any criteria for the writer. Uh, like, you can opt for any writer and uh, they have this like they have this invigilation system in place. But uh, in, in CA, uh, the biggest challenge was uh, to find a writer, find a suitable writer. Because to complete the papers in time, of course, I would have to dictate at a very fast pace. And the other person should be able to, he or she should be able to grasp it so as to be able to write it. Right. Yes. And uh, when it comes to the medical papers, like accounts and uh, you know other finances, then oh, we also, also need to be, be very, very good with the figures, like at least the totaling part. And yeah, because the rest all, of course, has to be dictated by me. But when it comes to total, like, balance sheet mein hai, and now at the end, uh, when the totaling needs to be done, or the totaling needs to be verified, that person should be very uh, decent. Now, uh, in CA court, you have this policy for the, like, the institute has laid down a policy wherein you need an undergraduate writer. Yes, even for intermediates and even for CA finance. Uh, so I think, first of all, this criterion should be removed. Because CA is not comparable with graduation. Like when you say undergraduate writer, so FY, SY, ka koi bhi banda hai bandi, aapka CA final ka paper likh rahi hai. Ya paper likh rahi hai. Right. So that is too difficult. Uh, like if you cannot allow for computers at this very juncture, then at least this this policy should be altered and I, I guess already there are rulings by the high court uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken yeah, I can I mean uh, say with uh, surety that there is a ruling by Bombay High Court uh, for CBSC that uh, uh, you know mm-hmm. you cannot put constraints on, on choosing a writer instead of that you can rely on your invigilation so as to make sure that there is no uh, there is no unfair uh, use or yeah. these things. Like there are no unfair means to. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so like... this should be done across all the I think all the state education boards, and uh, yeah, like and uh, all the um, uh, like across all the colleges. I mean UGC should implement this as well. This, so first uh, is this. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, you can continue. I'm sorry. No, no. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm done. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, no, you were saying first is this and then I think you were saying something. Yeah. And secondly, we can, uh, I mean, if we can, because we are talking about digital India, accessible India. So everywhere, like in all the exam, not just CA Institute, if we can shift all the exams as far as, uh, like at least the theory papers to computers, then it would be great because then a differently able or a visually impaired person would not have to rely on writers. When you type yourself, you know, okay, what you have typed. Let's say I'm dictating a thing to you. You write it there. 
and you might you know mistake uh, you, you might make a mistake with with the punctuations or your writing might not be very legible or visible to the examiner examiner right yeah. but when i type it myself okay i know how how much time would it take for me to complete the paper and uh, it will be like i mean i would be self reliant so when we are talking about uh, you know digital <clears throat> uh india or 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 like we should go digital in all the spheres of life then why not for uh, uh the exam for the different yeah. area and uh, in fact it would become very easy and fast uh, for the institute also to get these people uh, get this paper these kind of papers corrected because since you have done it digitally then maybe using uh, whatever kind of computer intelligence the marking scheme would also become quite easy if uh, processes are set in place right uh, and uh, yeah it's, so it's it should be a win win ideally of course there should be, uh, there would be initial effort uh, from the institute side but uh, it should not come from the high court or supreme court it should be understood by the institute and the in not just our institute but institutes across the country in the world that uh, you know this kind of inclusivity is very important because uh, otherwise how are we going to reward talent in an uh, in a way that is just and equitable for everyone how are we going how, hmm. how are we going to create that world right and uh, yeah so it's not about the institute like because we are i guess like all the examination bodies across our country have never dreamed of or now have never imagined that a visually impaired person can appear for exams by himself or herself using computers right theek hai because even in my uh, like own school like uh, when there were both board exams 10th and 12th the scheme of things which i told you previously about that okay i used to appear for my exams on computers in my school but that was not for 10th and 12th boards because boards again do not allow that uh, do not allow for a visually impaired person to appear on computers they always need they, they are always of the view that uh, what conventional system has been in place that using a scribe or writer only like a disabled person can appear for for the examination so i think that notion needs to be challenged uh, and right from the grassroots grassroots level i think because many schools also didn't i mean i was lucky that my school allowed me to do that as far as the uh, exams within the school were concerned but uh, i have i mean heard of other schools not uh, permitting a student to do so and apart from that uh, like i also have a firm where i train uh, you know uh, train as in i have interns from the top mm-hmm. colleges of delhi mumbai etc everything and yeah. clearly the most uh, you know brilliant people across the country who have taken up commerce and right. even if i have to explain them the the difference between uh, previous year or say financial year and assessment year then it becomes yeah. a- is right so even the most brilliant people can't understand the difference between previous year and assessment year so imagine how tough it would be for you to explain what is an assessment year and how to write what in an examination so definitely like you said that a first year or a second year shouldn't be the person who should be writing my exam ideally it should be a uh, if not a chartered accountant then at least if if i am in final then it should be an intermediate student or so even if non ca i mean just keep it non ca but at least uh, one should be getting rid of the undergraduate criteria at least agar koi banda mcom or he or she has completed his bcom then why not i mean you okay you keep the criteria okay non ca non cs let's say but uh, at least remove that uh, uh, underword from the uh, like in front of the graduate at least let the student be a, be a graduate no i mean yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah so opt for a writer who is like who has not opted for ca so there right. are many students who are simply like who are simply completed their graduation and then you know they are looking for a maybe a mba or mcom after pursuing their bcom like they are not interested in doing ca or ca so let them write it so as far as the ca finals are concerned for ipcc okay undergraduate i i mean i can still justify that to an extent yeah. but for ca finals it becomes very difficult to just find an undergraduate i can't even say them that thing you just said that we can have undergraduates for intermediate as well because of the reason i told you that it's so difficult for me with yeah the resource every you know everything in place to explain to a person who is perfect and most one of the most intelligent people in the country 
to explain them the difference in itself is a 30 minute process or a 15 minute process right so how is that possible for a person in exam time with limited time constraint to explain that so thank you for your insights darpan i think i'll uh, i'll write this on social media tag the institute and you know the ministry of education to consider watching this uh, see watching this episode of us and take the necessary actions with this uh, i'll take a leave and it was really really wonderful uh, interacting with you i hand over the mic to akash to take the conversation forward thank you have a nice day yeah thank you panan um, it was really engaging conversation which you did with tapan um, now we will be discussing about like how even he manages his personal finance using the different apps like does he use that and what are the different challenges he faced there and like even not just the personal finance and like maybe like uh, what are the different uh, apps or maybe like how how is finding uh, different uh, day to day activities uh, like doing using the mobile applications useful or not so uh the one if you can talk about like uh, we have discussed about education uh, now if i just discuss we just discuss about like uh, other day to day activities like maybe uh, traveling maybe ordering food maybe like uh, managing the personal finance like what kind of different hmm. challenges you think uh, are there and like like and how you manage them right now Yeah, like I'm pretty independent as far as you know the daily routines are concerned. Mm-hmm. So okay, as far as ordering food is concerned, I use Swiggy uh, quite often. I mean, I okay. find Swiggy more accessible than Zomato uh, mm-hmm. because I think there are more buttons are labeled as as compared to Zomato because I use an uh, iOS. So like uh, I mean, from my personal experience, I find uh, Swiggy to be more uh, accessible as compared to Zomato on iOS. Thank you. Mm-hmm. i don't know about the android uh, uh, uh platforms like uh, and uh, uh as far as for ordering cab is concerned okay again i find uber to be more accessible than ola i mean i have this this preference because uh, again like on ola there are many buttons with you need to label them for for uh, you know uh, for the screen reader to read them but uh, uber has most of the buttons labeled very well so like oh, i mean ola is also usable i'm not telling that it's not usable but uh, e- as far as ease of use is concerned i think uber is better than than ola so i use the, these applications like all by myself i don't need any assistance like uh, because when i when i'm invited for you know speaking engagements all across the country then i i travel alone like um, um, Uh, whether it be anywhere in the country like from gujarat to delhi or anywhere and, and i manage my travel on my own uh, yeah and, and stuff like that i mean i'm pretty independent i right nice. uh, true so even uh, i can recall my own experience like uh, i even myself is a person with visual impairment and i when i try to use a different applications i even have the same uh, like um if i compare over and ola like i generally prefer over because yeah as you said like uh, i find them uh, useful uh, like properly accessible i want to say 100% but yeah it's a uh, much better than what is in ola and exactly. CG, uh, sorry yeah you are trying to say something no 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 i was just uh, yeah exactly i mean i also like yeah. Uh, uh, yeah share the same experience yeah yeah And similarly, like a uh, uh, Swiggy, Zomato, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I find them are really uh, challenging to use uh, because when I try to use them, like it's fine. Like with the time, you can learn, adapt, uh, and try to use them. But yeah, uh, but if if you talk about this food journey, like proper accessible app, uh, really, like I, I didn't find them. I most of the time just ask because I I live with with my family. um so i just asked them okay guys you order uh, this is what i i will just just, just prefer if there is something like this uh, you are ordering like just order that for me and then you you take take uh, uh, the responsibility and get the food order so uh, so this yeah, like, yeah yeah that's true yeah not right. 100% accessible of course like uber mm-hmm. also i mean until very recently uber had this limitation like okay after uh, ordering the cab if you needed to call a driver mm mm-hmm. um, 
it was very difficult and uh, like iphone i mean that that wouldn't read the button which mm -hmm. you use for a call uh, calling a driver so right. then you you had to make uh, you know you 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 had to make some work around like uh, there is this uh, feature called screen recognition now mm -hmm. uh, in ios so you have to enable that screen recognition like you have to put it on uh, mm -hmm. and you can uh, like set it on from the uh accessibility settings like uh, yeah uh, so that screen recognition when you put that on only then you will be able to call the driver otherwise like uber by itself didn't uh, uh have the proper label in place but i think in the last update now just like now in the in the during normal usage you can simply navigate to the call driver button and can do that so like it ha hardly has been like Maybe a fortnight or something uh, that uh, uh, this call driver button has appeared. And Swiggy right. also, as you said, yeah, it's it's a bit challenging, of course. But uh, mm -hmm. I guess in my case, I'm like I'm able to use uh, 80, 85 percent of the app. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Good to hear that. That's yeah. Right. And what do you use for like different personal finance? Like um, um you you are CS uh, yourself, so you you must be doing investment in different assets. Like, yeah, what is yeah, your actually, experience uh -huh. around that? Yeah, to be honest, I haven't used uh, like, uh, you know, any brokerage app or something by myself because I do stock market mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, like that has been my passion and I've been doing for that for the last week. I even trade and, uh, you know, uh, invest uh, like majority of the time I do investing, but I also trade. But like as of now, I simply call my broker and uh, like uh, ask them to do the transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, because I once used like uh, uh, HDFC Securities app, but it was not very accessible. So I mm -hmm. somehow, I mean, gave up on it. And uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I found it difficult to use. I mean, I couldn't mm -hmm. uh, access anything there. Like hardly 20, 30% of, of app was accessible. So in fact, mm -hmm. I am myself, you know, scouting for uh, some, you know, uh, app that uh, suits, uh, you know, that suits the needs of visually impaired person as far as the accessibility is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I heard from people that okay, Kite, this uh, Kite by Zidoda works well, mm -hmm. but, but uh, I'm not pretty sure how good it might be for even like option trading or something like for for derivatives. Even opening an account, yeah, I, I remember, okay, I tried opening an account on Zeroda, but mm -hmm. uh, then they had these uh, limitations, yeah, ki the visually impaired person couldn't open an account, like online account, uh, couldn't open an uh, account online with them directly. Right. So then they had some complex pro procedures in place that there's some representative would meet, you have, you'd have to wait for some 10 days or a fortnight. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the representative would meet you in person, like would visit you in person and get the details from you, um, get the like some impression or something on all the documents. Like there were some list of four or five documents. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean this is the case. Like yeah, even opening account online becomes so difficult uh, with with Zeroda because I tried that. Right. I, even I remember, like, when I opened, uh, I can see at that point of time, like, um, it's a gradual decrease in my sight. So I remember even opening, mm -hmm. uh, when I opened my Jiroda account, there was a pro mm -hmm. there was a requirement there that there mm -hmm. is a number displayed on the screen. You need to write mm -hmm. that on the paper and you huh. need to click a photo <laughs> keeping with, that number in that. front huh. of you. Yeah. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Why? Uh, okay, I know that like this is sort of like a uh, verification process, but yeah, this is there was no alternative for any person with disability. Like how how a person with disability can do that themselves? Yeah, and and okay, I did that with the help of a friend. Okay, I mean with the help of a friend that because yeah. uh, I mean I don't know how clear a selfie would I take along with the numbers very clearly visible. Right. right. So I did that with the help of a friend. But now, like as far as my eyes are concerned, they don't look normal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when uh, I, I took the picture, like my friend took the picture for me and then uh, we tried to like open an account with it. But since my eyes don't look normal and that's the reason I told you that they told me that uh, since uh, like there was a message displayed that as you are a person with visual impairment, mm -hmm. uh, 
we have uh, we are unable to open your account online so like we our representative would have to visit and uh, you know take your uh, some impression on the documents and then uh, then only would the uh, would it be possible for us to open an admit account so they and in fact right. So they made me the URL wherein uh, the they have this policy on their website, like right? like it's written down that a visually okay. impaired person cannot open an account with them directly online. So okay. even after you do that paper thing, uh, like if if there is even a bit of abnormality with your eyes, like if they don't look normal, because you know the eyes of some visually impaired people look absolutely normal, right? You cannot just looking at their face or like by looking at their eyes that uh, they do not see, right? But right. Uh, that's not the case with me. And hmm. with with sunglasses, of course, like as I'm wearing now, they don't allow you to take the picture because then some facial recognition or some verification doesn't work. So yeah, I, when I have to take the sunglasses off, yeah, that is the mandatory thing to do when you want to open an account. Hmm. Uh, otherwise, like for or even for all the KYCs and everything, you cannot, uh, you know. Uh, use the picture with the uh, glasses or something. Okay. So it was all very difficult. So I then gave up on it. I'm still continuing with this uh, uh, calling thing as of now. Okay. So you're still yeah, relying but... on the broker, call broker, and yeah, like, yeah, for all the yeah. transactions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, yeah. also like when I wanted to deal in derivatives, I mean, I like mm -hmm. started dealing in options and the mix. So, like, I started dealing in options some four, five, five months back. But hmm. uh, then they were very reluctant to, you know, allow me that privilege. Uh, hmm. Even, like, my existing broker, they were, weren't like, they were, like, we have this circular by SEBI wherein, you know, they have hmm. uh, prohibited visually impaired person from dealing in derivatives. Okay. I'm, like, this That's is it. my money. I'm betting hmm. with my knowledge. Hmm. How does that concern you? And hmm. uh, I mean, so they simply denied. They were like, no, no, these are the guidelines from SEBI. What, uh, what can we do? Hmm. So then I, you know, uh, like uh, found things myself, like online. I Googled it and did some research work. Uh, wherein I didn't find any such, uh, any of uh, the circular there. Yeah, hmm. yeah. So then I again... Approach my broker is like, okay, broker that, okay, give me now in writing that uh, this is there because I don't see any circular, mm -hmm. right? I'm a qualified CA and if there are, I have read entire SEBI Act, yeah, I have the, uh, read this uh, SCRA Act, everything, uh, even in my curriculum and uh, I haven't come across any of the circular and also like on Google, I couldn't find anything. So then, like, after arguing with them so much, and then they were like, okay, we'll open it again, and finally it did, they, they, they did. But uh, this is how, like, you know, the lack of awareness, like, as to what a visually impaired person can do or cannot. And same was the uh, issue with the credit card, like, when I had to get my credit card issued. Okay. Uh, also, there was a problem from the man. So okay. yeah, of course, these, uh, I think, financial uh, hmm. institutes or these things are concerned. I think awareness needs to be more. Yeah, so in the like credit card, you changed. faced the difficulty with the KYC or was... Uh... No, they weren't willing to issue a credit card to me. They were like, ki aap apne papa ke naam credit le do. use aap karo, aapka number dal do. But yeah. aapke naam pe, madlab, hum visually impaired ko credit card nahi de sakte hai. Aisa RBI ka wo hai. Like what's the uh, matlab, what's hmm. what has it to do with the, your visual hmm. impairment? Hmm. Chura liya, mala, to aapko bhi chura lega, matlab, so uh and uh, yeah, and uh, you know, then I had to pressurize my like uh, relationship manager a lot. And when they did, like when they did issue a credit card to me, they were like, ye sirf aise aapi ke liye kiya hai, aisa hota nahi hai generally. Matlab visually okay. impaired ko credit card uh, disallowed hai. Hmm. Baki okay. sab allowed hai, but credit card or hmm. uh, 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 net banking ke liye bhi they were like, hmm. <clears throat> disallowed hai. Man, wala, okay. Net banking disallowed hai, to normal banking to mein kahi se karunga. How would I hmm. do the hmm. normal banking? <laughs> you know, because net banking has come into existence. 
it will be due to that or i'm able to you know perform all the banking hmm. transaction had it not been for net banking to main physically jaake to kitni baar ye kar leta aur kaise kar leta hmm so yeah Correct. these are the basic things that uh, you know uh, they they sometimes the institutes deny because of their ignorance or i don't know uh, right Yeah. yeah, and yeah. this way they also lose the market. Like uh, because people then try to find the other way. Like as you are uh, saying, like you instead of using any of the uh, app which are there, you don't you directly call and did the transaction with the broker. This way, in a way, they are yeah. losing the market. Like um, there are yeah. many people like this who rely on the broker instead of using the app. So yeah, uh, this is this is something which they need they need to realize and they need to understand. Uh, it's not just uh, like uh, they they. Significantly losing the market, which is a fifteen percent of the market of the person with disability. So, yeah. And how how is your experience with the different banking apps? Uh, different banking apps. Okay, like I'm uh, using HDFC. I mean, I am not using their app. Mm-hmm. I normally don't do transactions using a mobile phone, but yeah, I'm using the net banking on my laptop or desktop. Mm-hmm. So like okay, HDFC website is quite I mean accessible I guess, but mm-hmm. uh, again uh, there is a pro- problem with this Kotak one. Like every uh, every time because like um, I also have my account in Kotak and uh, so there every time you log in you need to solve a captcha. Okay. There is no alternative. So, yeah yeah, हर बार ही captcha करना है. There is no even button mm-hmm. to uh you know button for this kya bolte audio challenge yeah mm-hmm. so there is no uh, audio challenge alternative there is uh, no otp alternative you have to solve a captcha for uh, you know uh, like all the transactions that you do there ha huh? so that creates a bit of a problem yeah always uh, solving a captcha in these things and also their app is also like uh, i mean the the net banking site is also less accessible स्टेटमेंट Fully accessible. It's a. I even do work some work around. Uh, when I try to open the statement, I have to do a, a like uh, double tap and long press on it. Otherwise, the statement mm-hmm. doesn't get open. Um, so, Achha. yeah. So you just double tap on it and keep the finger on the same point and uh, just keep it pressed there, and the statement mm-hmm. get open. And then mm-hmm. otherwise, what I generally notice is that uh, the focus gets shifted to some other thing. and uh, thing, yeah. you end up end up clicking on something else uh, instead of the statement but yeah yeah so yeah. yeah this accessibility is a very much an issue with the i think uh, the banking websites and the banking app right uh, in india i guess because as i told you like even for logging you need to captcha all the time so mm-hmm. it becomes difficult like you need to rely on someone to you know uh, to get you the captcha to dictate you the um, content of it But I think at least uh, in HDFC they don't have this uh, um, captcha issue. Uh, right. At least on their net banking website and uh, even while performing the transaction, you know these issues. And for checking right. balance and all these things, I mean I use Google Pay uh, very frequently because that's the most I guess accessible app mm-hmm. that uh, I have found till date as far as the financial domain is concerned. I mean we must right. appreciate them, right? Because as as compared to pay like you know Paytm or all the other apps. Mm-hmm. Google Pay is very easy to use, very <clears throat> simplified user interface, and all everything is labeled very well. Yeah, so, I will echo the same. Um, yeah, Google yeah. Pay quite. I wouldn't say hundred uh, percent. There are issues there as well, but yeah, it's a uh, uh, quite usable. Uh, like I can just give an a pointer. Like uh, the headings are not really marked as heading there. Like you cannot jump from one section to another section using the heading. In the Google, ah, that's true. You need ah, to scroll ah. the screen down. Um, there is yeah, no way that adding the screen down. down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but PayTM and example. all that, uh, they had this hamburger button and all. I mean, even the buttons are not uh, very this thing. Right. Uh, right. Very readable. Yeah. 
but yeah, yeah that label issue you will not find generally in the google play uh, even if even if you try to scratch the open which you get uh, you can easily yeah. scratch the open and you can see what what you got in that scratch yeah true yeah. true even with the you know scanning thing and every like uh, i think uh, my, like 95% uh, 95 to 100% of google pay is very very much accessible Mm -hmm. because uh, like for all my you know upi transaction for all my payments i simply resort to google pay right yeah. maybe i have gotten more used to it it could be so yeah I no mean, i would i would echo the same like um, that's okay. a same case with me also uh, like i yeah. generally prefer using the google pay because i didn't find any other apps um, yeah like accessible um, so i generally I, Though you will find many apps in my mobile application, uh, like sometime for a specific feature, I generally take help from my family and just get it done. Um, but yeah, uh, when I have to do myself, I generally use the Google Pay. Yeah, true that. Yeah, yeah, I resonate right. uh, with you yeah, on that. Right. Yeah, and, like, sounds... even for chess also, like you know, chess uh, mm -hmm. also there is this accessibility issue. Mm -hmm. uh, because the main software is for chess, like the chess base and bridge. There are two softwares which uh, normally, uh, like the sighted person uses for uh, uh, chess practice or analysis or uh, you know, looking at the games uh, of, of the masters. Mm -hmm. So even there, uh, like, you know, there are some accessibility issues. Till date, I was, uh, you know, using a version of of that software which was released 10 years back a decade back oh okay yeah such an outdated version but at least it used yeah. to be very much accessible hmm. so i was you know i was trying to cling on to that the versions which came up after that were you know hardly 60 percent uh 70 percent accessible though they had more features yeah mm -hmm. they had more uh uh like they were more user friendly in terms of the their uh, GUIs and everything, but mm -hmm. uh, still, I mean, they weren't they weren't very accessible with screen readers. So yeah, so I this see. accessibility issue, yeah, you encounter almost everywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a bit of so truth. Like, uh, yeah, most yeah. of the websites also don't offer tagged PDF. Then mm -hmm. you have this, you know, when you download the PDF, it will say alert, empty page, empty page. Right. Then you have to use the this thing OCR and all these stuff and uh, mm -hmm. get it converted into a doc file or something, right. and then read it. Like right. using the fine reader or yeah. Yeah. So uh, you mean to say that the the version which was available for these uh, chess softwares yeah. uh, that was yeah. more accessible, uh, which was available ten years before, and now True. that is not. Okay, true. That's exactly. you see, like, uh, yeah, because uh -huh. earlier people used to follow the practices <laughs> which even comply with accessibility standards. Uh, but now people are more moving towards the graphics thing, and which is making uh, apps more and more inaccessible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, because a, yeah, more yeah. and more dynamism. I mean, it's easy to use for uh, you know, sighted like it's as simple as this. Okay, Instagram is very easy to use for a sighted person. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for us, it really becomes uh, very difficult, you know, um, like as we, as compared to uh, Facebook. I mean, Instagram yeah. becomes a bit of a challenge for us, right? Yeah. Uh, even uh, just if I just say like, I, I, I don't have any my personal Instagram account due to the same reason. Because I'm yeah. like, uh, what, will, what will happen? Like, why, why should I use it? Uh, I'm not going to find it uh, something which I can use. Um, exactly. Right. Um, so where the problem yeah. lies, like they are moving towards more and more, you know, uh, uh, graphical based things, which like, uh, but now, I mean, along with that, they are not complying with the accessibility standards, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's becoming difficult for screen reader to navigate through those, you know, uh, dynamic elements or uh, whatever you call them in the technical jargon, not very good right. with that, but yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, so I will briefly, uh, I will also request you to cover around uh, Stephen uh, jo uh, Johnson syndrome, which you had uh, when you was at the age of three years, because many of the mm -hmm. audience will not be aware about what the syndrome is. 
what happens in mm. the syndrome. So if you can briefly um, introduce this, uh, what happens in the syndrome, like uh, what are the different challenges related to the syndrome? Oh, uh, okay. As far as the syndrome is concerned, I mean, like thing was like this. I was uh, going to like uh, the nursery, you know, after play group, there is a nursery. I was three years old and uh, to the nursery section, I started going. So I went to school for four days. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the fifth day, like I had conjunctivitis accompanied with fever. So okay. I was taken to a pediatrician. Yeah. And uh, like uh, it was this uh, child specialist and we had uh, child specialist and we had gone to him earlier as well. But uh, on that day, like for fever and conjunctivitis, he gave me an injection called gentamicin injection. Now, people who might be associated, uh, like who are in the medical field or might be associated with the medical field might know, know, know that uh, this injection is very common. And uh, we didn't have any prescription from him. Like, okay, we went to the vegetation, he injected from there, from his clinic. And uh, it's as simple as this. Like, So he says that he gave me a gentamicin. And because of that very injection, I got the Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Now, what happens in the syndrome is, I mean, uh, was like beyond our imagination. I had like black spots all over my body just within 12 hours of the injection. And okay. uh, the upper layer of my skin started, you know, uh, like uh, peeling off. So oh. the condition was so critical. I mean, I just didn't lose my eyesight, but uh, like so much heat was generated in my body that uh, the entire upper uh, dermal layer was, you know, uh, like uh, the entire upper dermal layer peeled off. Mm -hmm. So I was in hospital for about two months at that point in time. And the doctors were like, the Stephen Johnson is very rare and uh, it occurs to like one in 10 million people. I see. And okay. uh, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> there is no cure to it, or at least there was no cure to it back then. Mm. And this is what I'm talking about in '97, I guess. Yeah, so '97 okay. was the year. Doctors clearly told to my parents that uh, uh, if he survives, then it's your luck. I mean, we can just wait for a fortnight. Uh, I mean, keep him on steroids. And uh, like after 15, this reaction will uh, reach its peak uh, in, in 15 days. And uh, after the fortnight, it will eventually, you know, reduce by it, itself. What we can do is we can just uh, give, uh, um, you know, steroids and heavy antibiotics to mitigate the impact of the uh, syndrome. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like, and I'm the like only child of my parents. So for that fortnight, they weren't sure that uh, they would have me or they would lose me. Mm. And mm, okay, like finally all that uh, settled down and like, you know, I mean, I, I fortunately I survived. Uh, so everything recovered eventually, like my skin, nails, even the nails were peeled off due to the heat generated because of the reaction. So everything recovered within a year. What mm. was not recovered was this eyesight. So, and uh, yeah, and the reason of, I mean, uh, me losing my eyesight is, again, because of that reaction, as I told you, like, so much heat was generated in the body that the glands which make tears, yeah, the tear glands dried out. So, uh -huh. you know, okay. uh, yeah, when a normal person puts a finger in the eye, and, uh, like, you feel the lubrication or the moisture there. Right. Uh, that is not the case with me. So, because mm -hmm. of that, uh, like my upper and the lower eyelids, uh, they stick together, and uh, yeah, I mean, and that's the reason I'm unable to see. So, we tried it, you know, we tried uh, many operations, like I've been operated almost 50 55 times, okay. Uh, yeah, but uh, nothing worked. I mean, this like, uh, there's nothing as of now medically that helps in my case. And you was going through all of this journey when you were just three year old. Um, yeah, yeah. Like sure. You yeah. have to go through all this pain due to the, like, I I don't know what should I say like uh, the the wrong behavior or like what uh, like wrong knowledge. Yeah, of the maybe doctors. the careless of the doc carelessness of yeah. the doctor or maybe due to my own misfortune or whatever you call it. But yeah, mm. this is the case. 
but as they say you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger mm-hmm. and uh, you have to accept the reality yeah so better sooner than later so right. we we like like you uh, know mm, mm, of course like our world was i mean we we our world turned upside down for for that time but uh, eventually like after 6 months or a year when everything else was recovered we thought okay mm-hmm. i mean it is what it is and now we have to do the best with the uh, things available to us i mean with the faculties available to me right really hats off to you man uh, like uh, you have gone through such a uh, strange challenge uh, like uh, and it and in just a very small age even if i just talk about myself uh, like i was diagnosed with a uh, disease called retinitis pigmentosa in 2003 when i was ah, 10 years old okay yeah, yeah okay and due to this i started losing my eyesight gradually and like uh, even until 2021 i was having uh, the vision which allowed me to see on the screen the high contrast mode so i was okay. able to do my okay. education like when i did my phd from iit delhi uh, in the okay. social technology okay. domain only and mm. that i have done like i i was almost managed that using my uh, residual vision now mm-hmm. i am completely switched to the screen reader and all like i i completely rely on that um, so mm. this is like uh, but in your case you lost everything in just when you were just 3 4 year old and you have to go yeah. through all this pain and everything and even after that you achieve so much um, like you you bring the gold medals in the chess you have done ca you are aspiring for cs like <laughs> i i might let's yeah, not I end. Cat, uh, yeah. like i got an admission into i am lucknow Uh-huh. but uh, then my parents were un- uh, it was in 2015 2015 2016 i got an admi- like i um, i mean like uh, that cat uh, then i attended a personal i uh, attended a personal interview of i am bangalore and uh, lucknow mm-hmm. bangalore mein i was uh, waitlisted like i am bangalore and uh, i am lucknow i got the admission uh, okay, okay after that personal interview so i got the admission letter from them but then my parents were you know unwilling to send me to uh, such a far off place at that age yeah mm-hmm. and also i mean i thought okay if i go into iims then maybe chess i would never be able to play chess then i mean at least for next 2 3 years yeah mm-hmm. because then you have to go through that corporate grinding and everything and uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, finish off your mba then placements and everything so i thought i mean uh, and i was already doing this uh, like pretty well in in ca course like i had already cleared my intermediate or something by then Mm-hmm. so uh, okay like we uh then the uh, pursue this uh, mba uh, i am mba and uh, stuck to cnhs right yeah. okay so you 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 opted for chess uh, in comparison to mba yeah yeah and you from i am lucknow right fair uh, so any any final appeal to the ca fraternity or this bfi sector or like different apps digital apps uh, which we use for day to day life any any final appeal from them like which you have a final message for them my appeal is to the basically like you know all the app the app developers or the companies they, those are coming out with these apps i think uh, again the same thing no matter how uh, easy to use your user interface might be but it makes no sense unless and until you make it accessible mm-hmm. and i don't think that uh, no accessibility is that big of an issue to manage with all the resources available it just needs that extra you know uh, what do you call it sensitivity or uh, empathy that is what you need because uh, mm. i don't think that uh, making things accessible in this age and time is uh, such a difficult issue and a lot of uh, like websites have done that and especially websites outside india uh, you you find them like way more accessible as as compared to our country so right. like when we have these brilliant minds you know coming with innovative ideas solutions uh, uh, or our applications every day and like in our country itself then i mean why not uh, address the issue of accessibility and there are already i guess resources to do that you know there are all these standards issued by government yeah but uh, mm-hmm. maybe i i am not pretty sure they might be still recommendatory and not mandatory this is the reason that uh, no, 
ரிப்போர்ட்டட் but hmm. it doesn't have like any financial penalty attached yeah but i think it does have a financial benefit attached no as i said like i mean there uh, there are almost uh, if i'm not mistaken to 2 cr to 2.5 cr visually impaired people in the country right right uh, like around 20 to 25 million so hmm. if you make these things i mean as i said like if if zeroda is accessible or all the other brokerage apps are accessible or you know hmm. uh these ordering uh, uh food apps or uh like the e-commerce uh, websites or applications if all are accessible then i guess uh, they will have a huge uh, you know huge market from uh, i mean they will be able to cap- capture a huge market from the differently abled section of the society yeah, yeah that's so true like, that's true and we uh, if we find these apps friendly and website friendly then definitely we will resort to you know using them because that's the best alternative for us no like rather than relying on anybody else or uh, any sighted assistance i guess online is the world for us right only right. technology has enabled us to do whatever we have done like whatever you or i have done or many other uh, yeah, other uh, friends from the visually impaired or uh, section have done so mm-hmm. if that's the only option available to us and if these companies or app developers concentrate on making these accessible then definitely we are going to use it i mean is it not right yeah i hope yeah. So uh, there is a commercial uh, value attached to it yeah right. <laughs> yeah in a way they are losing the money <laughs> i mean it's not the financial penalty on them but yeah if they are losing the market in a way that we can say like they are losing the money um yeah yeah i hope uh, the people who are watching they will they will think about all of these things and will uh, advocate in their own organization and help making different apps accessible um so that is what i am hoping um any any final comment ah uh, that's it i mean uh, yeah like i mean no one like including ourselves and no one else in in general should confuse disability with inability right both are different right. inability and disability so just bear that in mind that right that's a very true message and i hope uh, who was uh, watching this uh, episode uh, have learned so much about accessibility and learn from the experiences of dapper and hope uh, we will see more and more uh, digital applications becoming accessible and also like we see uh, the, the transformation coming in the education sector where they allow persons with uh, blindness to appear for the examination um, uh they, they can give the exam by themselves on the computer uh, they don't need to rely on the scribe and even they should follow the standard practices uh of the scribe but ultimately they should allow the person with uh, visual impairment person with blindness to appear for the exam themselves and write them on the uh, the computer themselves with yeah. this uh yeah and open anything no that's it thanks yeah. a lot Thank you yeah. for having me here. It was wonderful conversation with you. Yeah, same here, Dapan. Uh, like, it was really very nice. And uh, we, I really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, I really I learned a lot about you. And I, even I uh, feel inspired from you. Like, you have done so much uh, good things you have done for the country. And, uh, like, I hope uh, many people will listen to this and, like, uh, move towards making more and more digital content accessible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dapan. Stay tuned for many such enlightening stories in our Digital Inclusivity Dialogue series. Follow, like and subscribe to us on these platforms for the latest news on digital accessibility. Book a free consultation to make your platform and digital content more accessible.